D4 fan, we just rocking the, the PJs today, man. We got that coronavirus happening out there and it is just like legit getting crazy, fam. And no, this is not coffee, this is tea. Not doing the coffee thing. Oh man. So I hope all of you all are at home, staying safe, washing your hands, doing the quarantine deal so we can stop this thing from spreading because uh, yeah, very, very, very nasty situation. What was I gonna? Oh, G7. So the Lumix G7 has been out for five years. And uh, since then, uh, a lot has changed. I've played with it over a year now. Shot a couple of short films with it. Man, this, this guy's a little beast. But after a year of use, what are my thoughts on it? Hmm. In 2020, is this little guy still relevant? I am not covering all of the specs on this. I already did a review video on this camera. You can find it here. I'm just gonna cover a couple of cliff notes. Well, it shoots 4K. It shoots 60 frames per second full HD. It's got nifty little focus assist features like focus peaking. Of course, we got the three inch articulating touchscreen. Uses contrast detection for autofocus. Got some time-lapse features. You can control your camera remotely via the Panasonic imaging app. It's the, the little smartphone app deal. So what's good? Well, first off, the price. You can get this bad boy with a lens for about $500. A 4K camera for $500, that alone is still still worth the price of admission. You get 60 frames slow motion at full HD. It has all the features you'd need to shoot quality video. It's compact, great for guerrilla filmmaking. Nobody's gonna bark at you with this little guy if you're shooting in public because I mean, it's such a small footprint. The lithium ion batteries are 1,200 milliamps. One battery lasts for hours. You can pretty much get through a whole day of shooting with one or two batteries. The 29 minute, 59 second record limit thing, that doesn't really pose any problems for filmmaking because I mean, let's face it, when when are we recording 30 minute takes? Never. If you're recording yourself, the Wi-Fi remote feature definitely comes in handy. Also, the preamps in this little guy, some of the best I've seen out of a prosumer level camera. Right now I'm recording audio directly into camera using a Rode Video Micro. And as you can hear, it sounds pretty good. The fully articulating three inch touchscreen, that's an essential feature for running gun filmmaking. If you're new to filmmaking, like you're just starting out on this whole film journey thing, I'll tell you right now, like, this is where it's at. <coughs> Gotta have it. Low light performance. Usually like the bigger the sensor, the better because it can just like take in more light. This camera has a smaller sensor. However, it still beats the pants off other cameras I've used in the past when it comes to low light performance. Now, is it gonna outperform like an A7 series camera? Of course not, but I mean, it, it's pretty darn good. If getting better low light performances in a shallower depth of field is a concern for you, you can always get like a speed booster for this little guy. It'll enable you to use Canon lenses. You can get the shallower depth of field, all of that. Okay, so I have had plenty of time to get to know this little guy. First off, like while it shoots 4K, which is awesome, it, it only shoots the 4K in, in an MP4 codec, which is not a very editor friendly codec. Very, very hard on your processors. <laughs> Editing in MPEG-4 crashed both my laptop and my desktop. It, it wasn't the 4K causing the crashes, it was the 4K in the MP4 codec that was causing the crashes. MPEG-4 is just such a like, you know, highly compressed codec. But here's the good news. Uh, I made proxy files uh, when I did the short film with this little guy and I cut those proxy files and I didn't have any more problems. That was it. Like from that point forward, no issues. Just to be clear, I didn't have any problem with the HD coming out of here. It was only the 4K MP4. And also the codecs coming out of this camera and many at this level, they're not meant for heavy color grading. You're still shooting highly compressed 8-bit video, so there isn't a whole lot of latitude in post to be pushing those colors around. When I shot Not Cool, I shot everything using the faithful picture profile for this reason. I didn't use any flat or log profiles. It can handle a light grade, but it falls apart if you do any heavy, heavy grading. The same thing is true for most cameras in this price range. This video is sponsored by Artlist. All the music you're hearing in this video is from Artlist. I've, I've used Artlist for like the last couple of years. If you are looking for royalty-free music, you should check them out. And the D for Darius like music playlist is official. It is up. Some of you have already seen it over there. You can find songs I've used in my videos, short films, a few songs I've used in the Unsound documentary, etc. Check it out. I 
I mentioned this whole playlist deal before in another video, but it wasn't ready yet. Now it's official. They update their catalog on a daily basis. So if you're looking for music, they have a ton of music. I have never had a problem finding music for any of my stuff. You will probably find something that will fit the vibe you're looking for. I guarantee it. With an Artlist subscription, you get unlimited downloads for an entire year. And if you sign up using the link below, you will get two extra months free on your subscription. So people have complained about the autofocus. The autofocus in HD works much better than the autofocus in 4K. I'm assuming it's because the processor is like prioritizing the imaging data over the autofocus. Again, true for most cameras in this price range, the autofocus always works better in HD than it does in 4K. That's sort of a non-issue for narrative filmmaking anyway, since most of of the time we're using manual focus. So, eh. Another thing that really, really bugs me with this camera is like, the file structure thing is annoying. Like, what is that about? You just gotta like jump through so many folders to access the files. So here we go. Look how I have to hunt for the media here. So it's probably here. I've done this a few times. Here's the media. But I mean, all of these folder options, every single time I come in here, I'm like, which folder was it again? <sighs> Not that one up, oh, wrong. Go back, 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 back. It's a small thing, I know, very small thing, but still like very annoying. Actually, the biggest issue I have is I can't use an external monitor during live recording. I really, really like using an external monitor. It's just easier to grab focus, it's easier to shoot outdoors when it's really, really bright outside and it turns the back of your viewfinder into a, a mirror. I like the added feature sets, the convenience. Um, they're great for gimbal work and you can't use any of that with this guy during live recording. It will send a signal to the monitor so long as you are not recording, but the second you press record, boom, signal stops. I get it, they wanna protect their other camera lines, but still it's, it's really annoying. Now sure, you can get one of the Atmos recorders and get around it, but if you're spending that kind of money, you're probably not investing in a camera like this. I picked up a GH4 to finish up this short film that I'm currently working on or was working on thanks to the Corona thing because I got tired of working around the whole monitor issue with the G7. Do I still use it? Still shoot vlogs with it, still shoot microfilms with it, record rehearsals with it. If I'm doing auditions or something, I'm gonna bring this guy. Honestly, if I'm doing like something, you know, small microfilmy type, it's easier to break this guy out it's got such a small footprint. Is it still a viable option for new filmmakers? Without a doubt, absolutely yes. This is still one of the best deals on the market at this price point. Like in terms of a starter camera for, you know, new filmmakers starting out, this is a smoking deal, still. There is the whole external monitor issue, but again, this is meant, this is like an entry level camera. This is meant for beginners. If you need an external monitor for the types of shoots that you're doing, you're probably not a beginner. If you're trying to move into paid videography gigs, you can do it with this. Doing small like music video shoots and things, you can do it with this. Uh, just starting into feature narrative work, obviously you can do it with this. I mean, I've shot short films with this, you guys have seen. It over delivers. You get a lot of bang for your buck and if you really know what you're doing, you can get some incredible stuff out of this camera. These also make for great crash cameras actually. Like you could use these in shooting scenarios where you don't want to risk damaging your pricier camera packages. I will leave a link to a kit profile below uh, featuring like this camera and things that you can get for guys who are just starting out on this filmmaking journey. If you are a pro at this, you are dismissed. It's not for you. This is specifically for people who are just starting out. And uh, yeah, if you haven't seen the short film that I shot with this guy, I will also maybe link that below or up here or maybe an in screen or something. As always, thank you for watching. Keep those cameras rolling. Rack up your 10K and D Brit out.